In this video, I'm going to using the OM1 to photograph Heath fritillaries. I'll be using either the 40 to 150mm f2.8 plus MC14 converter or the 60mm f2.8 macro. And all the pictures are taken handheld. I'll also be explaining why on this occasion I choose to use single shot rather than focus stacking. So this morning what I'm photographing is butterflies. In fact, particularly heath fertilities. I'm at Hockley Woods in South End, and that's an area that's particularly well known in for heath fertilities. It's the beginning of June when they're on the wing, and I've got up early in the morning to try and find some before they start getting active. I've been here about half an hour, and it's taken me that long to find the first two that I've got to come across. There's one probably just out of view there, it's sitting nicely, uh, on a grass and there's another one over there and I'll photograph both of them. The, the lens I'm using at the moment is a 40 to 150 with a 1.4 converter on. The reason is with that longer lens it will enable me to throw the background a little bit more out of focus. So you might say well why aren't I using the 60mm and focus stacking because that will throw the background out of focus. Focus stacking only works in conditions where the subject doesn't move and today, although the butterflies aren't moving, as far as they're physically not moving, the wind is certainly making them move. There's a lot of wind today, it's not ideal conditions and they're swaying about quite a bit. So with focus stacking you probably find, I'll give it a try but I don't think it's really going to work, I could be surprised. Um, I should be able to get close enough to them. Uh, with this 40 to 150 I can photograph them from about five foot away and get a fine frame filling image but because it's quite cool and they're torpid they I should be able to sort of get some shots with the 60 mil so we'll see how that goes It's important when you're photographing a butterfly like this, it's just sitting there nicely on a bit of grass with its wings folded back, that you try to get the camera parallel, or the back of the camera, as parallel with the actual butterfly as possible. You're going to get a lot more in focus if you can get the back of the camera parallel. Now the, it's sitting there nicely, but if I shoot it from this angle, I'm going to be photographing it more head on and I won't get the back wing shot. I can get parallel with it, get flat onto it. I stand a lot better chance of getting a nice sharp image. So I'm probably about four foot, well, five foot away here and it's filling the frame quite nicely with this 40 to 150. I've got it set just below 150. So here I'm actually using the 60mm macro lens. The butterfly is about 12 inches away from me. It's literally there and I can actually get the, my finger almost touching it. So why doesn't it fly away? Well, it's because of the temperature. It's still only 20 to 7, but it's actually very cool this morning with the wind. Um, they're not flying around. In fact, I, I thought I wasn't going to find any this morning. I was having a good half hour looking round for them before I actually found two that were sitting nicely. And when I say nicely, where I can actually get a clear backdrop, often is not when it's cool, they're in vegetation quite deep down. What I have actually have done is uh, there were some grasses in the background that were a little bit dis disturbing, you know, they were a little bit too close. So what I've done is I've just sort of cut those down a bit, just done a little bit of gardening. Some purists will say you shouldn't do it, but providing you aren't actually really doing any problems, you know, not disturbing it. And certainly it's sitting there as good as gold. I couldn't wish for a better one. So with this, I don't even look through the viewfinder. I'll just compose it on the back screen. But it's really moving around quite a bit now. It's just a case of taking a series of pictures and I've actually got the camera set on continuous autofocus. Although I'm taking single shots, 
I've got it on continual order overs because it's moving very, very slightly, only a little bit. So that continual autofocus will help to keep it in focus. It's really going ridiculously now. And, and when that happens, the best thing to do is just wait. I mean, the wind, you can see, is swaying about quite a lot. But if you wait long enough, eventually you'll get a lull in that wind and they will be more or less stationary. Not perfectly, but you stand a lot better chance. Just wait. It just dropped a little bit now. So take a couple more. We'll see what we get. So this morning I've been lucky. When I first got here, it's been half an hour wandering around and I thought conditions really wouldn't be suitable. But I think I've got some nice shots. Sometimes you can find butterflies, particularly when it's cool like this, and they're quite low down in the vegetation. Fortunately, these ones have sat there quite nicely. I've had to do a little bit of gardening, just sort of taking one or two distracting bits of grass in the background out. But I can do that quite easily with a pair of scissors because it's not actually worried, it's, it's sitting there quite happily. And in these conditions, you can actually move them. People don't realise that, that when it's cold like this, you can actually get them on the end of your finger and move them around and then transfer them onto other things. So I'm going to try it here with this. Just see if it will... Come on the end of my finger like that. So you can actually then transfer that onto another another piece of another plant, another bit of vegetation, whatever you want. And that's what I might actually do. I might go and put it on a leaf and photograph it there. But you can see there how it's really just sitting there on the end of my finger quite happily. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock midday when it's, it's warm, you haven't got a hope in hell of doing that. But in these conditions, you can get away with it. So I've put the butterfly here on this bit of grass. It's sitting there quite happily. It's quite easy to transfer it. What I'm actually doing is photographing with the, the 60 mil macro. I can shoot at 200, so I'm getting 250th of a second, but at the moment it's still swaying about all over the place. Probably not the best piece of grass that I could have selected. It's quite tall, so the wind's catching it. It'd been better p picking something a little bit lower down. But even still, even with it moving around, if I wait long enough, there will be a lull in the wind. And that's when I can take some shots. So I'm looking through the viewfinder there, the other way to do it, and the way I actually prefer is to actually just look on the back of the screen. And also you can look to see whether or not the movement stopped a lot easier this way. Just stop briefly. Zoom into it, that looks okay, that looks fine. So it's been quite a productive morning, but I think it's time to pack up now. Um, I was very lucky to find two that were really sort of sitting there quite nicely. I must admit when I first got here this morning, I thought I was really going to struggle with the wind and the, the cool temperature. I was lucky to find any, to be honest. Uh, certainly haven't seen any flying or on the wing. Um, but hopefully, you know, it, it's, it's been a good morning. I've been to this location a couple of times and it's always seemed to produce. At this, you go the first week of June when they're on the wing and, and active. Uh, it's always a good place to come. So here I'm going to show some of the shots that I took that morning. I did have a couple of attempts at focus stacking while using the 60mm macro lens. Even though I waited until the wind had dropped, there was still some slight subject movement within the series of shots in the stack, which resulted in a blurred image. 
after two attempts, I decided I was getting far better results on single shot. So here I'm going to show a series of stills of Heath Rotillaries taken on a previous visit to Hockley Woods. At the time, I was using the EM1 Mark III, a camera I still have and use, although my go-to camera now is the OM1. All the pictures were taken using the 40 to 150 f2.8 plus the MC14 converter. The big advantage of using a longer focal length lens for macro is that you can photograph insects and butterflies from five foot away, which means there is far less chance of scaring them. All these shots are again taken handheld. On this occasion, I managed to find a pair of mating heath artilleries. They were on the natural food plant, which is cow wheat. They were quite low down and at an angle that made it difficult to get a decent shot. With this shot, I photographed them at f11. This is the smallest aperture that I'll use on the Olympus. You must bear in mind that with micro four thirds, f11 equates to f22 on a full frame camera. Although you should theoretically get more depth of field with a smaller aperture, you will start to get a softening of the image due to diffraction. Because of this, I normally shoot most of my single macro images at either f5.6 or f8. I did manage to coax them towards the end of the plant, which resulted in this image, which I felt was the best image of the day. Using the 40 to 150 2.8 plus MC14 converter enabled me to get a very clean backdrop. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.